and what I hope to accomplish uh, with this race. Um, I, I'm from Nevada originally, uh, born in Nevada. I've been in California for uh, coming up on two, three years now, two and a half years. Um, I found the Greens in 2000 when Ralph Nader ran for president. Um, I didn't even know about the Greens before that. And uh, I supported his presidency and then started to find out about the Greens. Uh, and then in 2006, uh, I helped Craig Berkland. He was the governor candidate in Nevada. Uh, I advised his campaign and got his only um, debate appearance uh, when the American Institute of Architects uh, sponsored a debate. Uh, they originally were excluding the third party candidates, uh, but I, I was a member and I, I called them and asked why they were doing that and they, uh, they changed their policy and, and included him uh, with the Democrat and Republican. So that was his only debate appearance. Um, and then in 2010, uh, we were in a similar position in Nevada, trying to get some people to run for statewide office with very limited resources. Uh, so I agreed to run uh, for governor of Nevada. Uh, we only had about 4,000 people in our party at that point. And uh, it was a crowded field. There, there were seven candidates. And also Nevada has none of the above. Uh, none of the above came in third place. Um, it was kind of scary. And, I used to support it, but it actually injured third-party candidates in that race. Uh, it was really hard for any of us to get uh, even 1% because of none of the above eating, eating all the refuse votes. Um, so then I made the decision to come to California, and we, we have this top two primary situation, which it's bad, but in this race, it, there is some potential. Um, there are currently three Democrats running, and now two Republicans, as of uh, October 30th, another Republican has seriously entered the race. So they're breaking the corporate vote up for us, which is very nice of them. Um, however, the price point for statewide offices is, is relatively high still. Um, the incumbent spent 300000 roughly above board um, to retain her seat. And now it's an open, it's an open seat, theoretically, to the highest bidder. Um, there are three pretty high bidders right now. Um, two Democrats, have, one has about $300,000, uh, the other has two hundred thousand. Uh, the Republican is, uh, I think, a multimillionaire, so he's probably good. Um, there's a second Republican, I haven't seen his war chest, but um, I, I'm uh, operating with less than that. Um, I initially thought that we could run an effective statewide campaign with about $100,000. And that's where I'd like to see us get to. If we can field candidates with 100,000 in a multi-candidate race in an open primary, I think we can accidentally squeak in. Um, a couple weeks ago, the situation was the three Democrats were splitting their vote. And if they got about equal split on the vote, there's actually enough decline to state voters to outpace what their shared vote would be. So, so, so I think there are enough votes there for a strong third party, you know, like Johnny Anderson and Ralph Gator, to get that third party vote. And, and so that's the goal. Um, the question is, is, is any of our, are any of our statewide parents, you know, going to be able to do that? Because we're all in the same boat. And I, and I think the answer is, yeah, the one that has about $100,000 and has enough name recognition like Luis or someone like Luis, um, or someone who's just in the right race. I mean, a pretty good race, it's, it's, it's kind of a wonky race. People don't understand what the Secretary of State really does as I'm talking to voters. Um, many of them don't know what it does, have thought about it. Some of them don't even know that it's an elected position. Um, so, so there's some voter education that's happening. But, and uh, the discussion about whether it's good to run multiple candidates or fewer candidates, uh, the good thing about running more candidates regardless of the outcome, is there's, there's a lot of voters that are just checked out and not really paying attention. So, so every time we run a candidate, you know, it's an education moment, uh, potentially. Um, but I, I'm, still, I'm still in the place where I was back in July when I announced, uh, I think if I can get enough traction, enough money, I can maybe squeak in there. Um, and the, the corporate candidates are loading up the race. So I'm saying, you know, I'm hoping they run more, more candidates. Um, 
I'm afraid that the reason, I suspect the reason that the second Republican has entered the race is he looked at the math and understood that now they have a chance of having the top two spots. Because, uh, you know, if they split their vote equally, uh, we could wind up with two Republicans. Um, not going to make any value judgments about that, <laughs> but uh, the reason I'm doing this is I think it's really important that we continue to run candidates who are bought and paid for. Uh, you know, they aren't paid for by a corporate we, we got to get somebody, I mean, it's, it's great to have proportional representation as a goal and get some Greens in to the legislature, but we've got to have somebody in the executive. We've got to have somebody in there, you know, in the hen house, that, or, the, or I guess the reverse of the hen house. Um, we, we've got to have somebody in each, each branch of government, and we have to show them that, you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to press into that. So, so that's, that's what I'm trying to do, and I hope they'll support uh, this candidacy. Um, and I'll, I'll do my best to earn it. If you have any questions for me, please uh, please contact me today, or uh, I'm available. Uh, the website's votedavidharris.org. Uh, just call me up. Um, uh, an attorney called me today, expressing concern that her Twitter feed was showing up on my campaign site, and I was implying an endorsement, and I, so I've been in conversing with an attorney today. <coughs> hopefully uh, calm her fears that she uh, was a, making an endorsement when it's just a Twitter feed. So, so, and I bring that up because there's technology that's available to us, and I'm using it as much as I can. I, you know, I've got a YouTube channel, Twitter feed. I'm going to use everything I can to get the most bang of the buck. So th thank you, and I hope you'll consider endorsing the Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We do have time uh, for questions, actually. So um, if people have questions, it looks like this field, let's go ahead and line them up. Um, let, let's line them up stage right. Um, actually, maybe, David, do you want to join me on this side? You can answer here, and then they can ask there. Uh, Michael Rubin, Alameda County. Um, my, my question is, uh, could you Give me some idea of what your top issue or issues, let's say top three or top one, or some, some notion of the ideas that you intend to highlight during your campaign. Yes, um, I'm looking for potentials. Um, obviously, we need some reforms that are going to make the process more fair, that are going to get multiple, uh, uh, multiple parties into play. Um, I totally support proportional representation. I, th I think if we could get only one thing accomplished, you know, that, that would be the most important thing to do. Um, and, and we need to get uh, legislative, uh, you know, buy into that. Um, but what I'm looking for is how can I use this office to do two things. One is uh, make the process more fair, but, but also um, there's, there's a lot of economic concerns right now and I'm looking at how the office interacts with the economy and how we can, we can <laughs> repair the damage that's done to both the economy and the environment. So th those two aspects. Um, for instance, uh, I've been talking about uh, banning fracking. You know, using, using the uh, stamp that the Secretary of State has to initiate business licensing and revoke licenses that way. So, so you know, getting rid of fracking from that office. Um, you know, I'd be proactive with that office instead of uh, just responding to what the legislators, the legislature is putting onto the office. Um, I don't know if you know this, but uh, the, the Secretary of State's office just in the last uh, in the last term has grown from 300 to 500 people, and that seems to be just responding to new tasks that are being created by the legislature. Um, and and I, I don't know if any of that is addressing you know the pressing concerns of. We don't have enough jobs in this, in this country. We don't have enough jobs in this state. Um, you know, what, what can the Secretary of State do about getting out of you know, the obstacles of job creation? And, and what can the Secretary of State do that makes sure that these new jobs we're creating are actually going to you know, be kinder to our environment? Um, also, um, I've been talking about the, the Fukushima issue because it's, it's toys to have uh, a potential impact to our economy, uh, you know, if, if we're getting a degraded environment, uh, you know, along our entire coastline potentially. 
and, and that's happening right now. I mean, those contractors in Japan are <laughs> fixing to transfer these rods, and it hasn't been done before, and they don't have a good track record. So, um, you know, that, that's what I'm looking at, is how, how the office can be used to uh, interface with the economy and environmental protection. Thank you. Next is Amin. I'm Amin Newton, Marin County. Uh, David, I, um, you answered part of my question just now about uh, the fracking and trying to get a handle on corporate um, interests in this state. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about ideas you have to require all corporations that file with the Secretary of State in terms of environmental audits or other um, sort of requirements that you might impose on them? Yes, well, I think the main thing is transparency. Um, I've, I've been witnessing some dynamics where there are already um, requirements put upon uh, processes like the impact reports and uh, with, with the planning processes. Um, I think it needs to be transparent and, and there needs to be more opportunity for public comment because what I'm noticing is when uh, entities are going through the processes, they really clamp down on the public comment portion. Um, you only get like two minutes or something. And, and to me, that, that's where it's really stifled. It's not like a democratic open process. Um, so it, even with uh, the Plan Bay area that just happened, um, you know, I, I didn't meet too many people who actually read through the entire document. And there's a lot of political discussions that happened with it. And it's almost impossible to know if there's adequate environmental review on it or not. And then when people are commenting, they, you know, they get this little crumb of comment time. So I don't, I don't think the um, public discussion process in general is adequate enough. And it's, it's too, it comes across as just uh, too fascist. Um, you know, when I go to public meetings, even at county level, you get this little two minute time. And I, I understand it's a, it's a cost and time efficiency aspect, but you have to have adequate discussion and it has to be free discussion. And, um, so that's what I would emphasize is I would, I would just encourage, uh, you know, if a community has a concern, uh, they, they need to have open and adequate discussion and, and forget about the two minute rule stuff. Thank you. So David, thanks first for stepping forward. Uh, a couple of questions, one internal, one kind of broader external. Uh, it, it was brought to my attention first on the internal side that early in your campaign, you had posted some stuff uh, from an internal party fight in one of our counties. And um, I think some, some folks wonder whether that's really appropriate or necessary for a statewide candidate to be getting into our internal stuff. So kind of going forward, is that still on your site? And are you going to continue to publish those sort of things? Um, on the issue related side, if you ran into an average voter who may have voted for the top two system and you wanted to convince them that our approach for proportional representation is better, what would you say to them? Or if you were really, you know, in a TV debate or something, how would you spin why the top two wasn't the right reform and why the proportional representation would be so? Thanks. Sure. Um, and just remind me, um, I've been kind of confrontational with uh, with Twitter posting uh, in the spirit of WikiLeaks, um, so so I, I have sort of tended to err on the side of transparency. But um, can you tell me, Mike, what specifically it was that was posted? Well, so actually, other people had called it to my attention. I never read it, but okay. apparently, one of these pass around letters of people in our party accusing other people in our party. Of oh, I know. Thank you, Mr. Mike. Um, I remember what it was. Um, yeah, that letter had been sent to me, and then the person who originated the letter uh, was looking to me to do something about it. And so what I did is I, le I essentially leaked it. So, so in my brain, in my social media brain, I was treating it like a WikiLeaks leak. Um, and, then, and then I realized it was sort of obnoxious, and I think at some point I pulled it off of there. Um, but I have, I honestly have gotten some feedback on some of the things I've posted. Um, I know when, um, honestly, when um, the Green Shadow Cabinet was invented, um, I didn't know whether it was a real thing or not. And so I, I did some snarky commenting for a day or two on that, too. 
And so, so um, and then I, you know, I backed off of it, and then I realized that it actually was a real thing. And so, so, um, so I think I would just say, you know, uh, uh, I know that sometimes it's good to have an executive pause and sleep on things. And and, and with Twitter, um, what I like about it is sometimes when you do dumb confrontational stuff, it actually gets a lot of play. So, so part part of it is an attention gathering, um, but sometimes you don't, you know, it, when, when you don't have a big budget, um, you know, you can throw a tantrum and do dumb attention things. Um, you know, I think Roseanne Barr was good at that. <laughs> But she had um, money. But I don't, I, I don't think I've been diagnosed as bipolar, but um, I mean, part, part of that is that. Um, okay, and then in, in terms of justifying um, proportional representation. Um, in other words, a top two person, oh, why top two was okay. the right reform and PR is the right, is the right one? Well, I think top two, got, we got stuck with top two, and it actually came in before I came to California, so I can't take any blame for it. But, but it, it does have an interesting dynamic. And I think if we weren't in a uh, money rules kind of situation where the highest uh, first wins, top two actually would be maybe okay. But we are in a situation where uh, it's a price point thing. So what top two is doing is the, the guys and girls with the most money are going to be the top two likely. Um, and so, so I really see the economic problem with it. Um, but in general, I would just argue that it's better to have an open field and with proportional representation, let the voters decide, and then don't have this arbitrary cutoff. I, th I think the arbitrary cutoff of the top two is just way too high, and it's basically, it, it seems to be an elitist construct. It's like, we're, we're only going to slice off the top two of this huge field, and it's solely based on either money or allegiance to corporate party. So, and <clears throat> what I've been told is that uh, the Republicans snuck it in at midnight or something. You know, that's how they got it passed, which I, you know, how does that work exactly on the supposed de democratic society, you know? How do things get snuck in at midnight that nobody reads and the vote, and, and how do the voters support it, you know? Um, that's what I really don't understand is why. Um, and the only legitimate argument I've seen is, um, well, a valid concern I've seen is there are, there's a growing number of people that don't have party allegiance. And those people that are commenting on like IVN network, uh, they're saying we're sick of parties. Uh, the good thing about top two is it lets everybody in that initial pool. And which, it, that's true, except that it's still it's the rich guy wins. So, so we've got to figure out how to diffuse the problem with the rich person winning. Um, or the, the party, uh, you know, the installed party person. Um, so, it, and, and that's one thing is like, my frame of, of the Green Party is I, I don't really see us as, a, as the third party, you know, because that just implies, oh, we'll just become the third of the, you know, triopoly, I guess, whatever you call it. Um, you know, we're something other than the third party. We're, we're like, we're like, the, you know, the replacement crews. We're supposed to be the replacement crew for the whole structure, I think. Um, so that so that replacement crew would be a proportional representation. And, and if you have proportional representation, then the party is just you know it's 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 part of the spectrum that's included that's folded in the process. So. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, just a quick time check. Uh, we have lunch schedule at twelve. Uh, the other candidate that was supposed to speak um, it doesn't appear to be here. So I'm thinking. Um, are you going to put on the stack? So we're going to close the stack, I heard, and then um, it'll probably be lunch time and we'll all enjoy lunch. Uh, so we'll continue with uh, questions. Hi, Ian. Um, my question is really simple. Uh, two parts, I guess. <laughs> How, what is the most effective way that you've seen or experienced in raising money? And if you do eventually have to get the money out, I feel like they have any sort of like genuine conversation about what needs to happen. How do you plan on approaching that? And who are you? Where are you from? I'm sorry, I'm Sean Marshall from Los Angeles County. Yes, I, I think um, what I've seen with fundraising uh, over the last two cycles, at least at the presidential level, is these small asks, uh, frequent small asks that are coming in an email blast, coming to smartphones, you know, give me $3, give me $5, give me $2. 
that seems to be the new uh, norm. Um, uh, and, and personally, uh, you know, I'm going to be relying on some advisors who are really good at fundraising because uh, I clearly am not so hot at it. And I, I haven't met a green candidate yet that's really great at it. Um, and despite setting the goal of you know 100,000, uh, just since July I've raised a little over a thousand dollars, and that's been very passive. I haven't been doing email blasts. Um, frankly, I don't read email blasts. I immediately delete them. Um, but other people may have a I don't know what percentage of people are still reading email asks, um, but it's probably enough to keep doing them. I did. Uh, I saw one that uh, one of my opponents did, uh, so I know what you know he's asking for. Um, it, it's interesting. Um, I'm looking at the other guys in races. Uh, so far, Leland Yi. I'm not supposed to say their names, but Leland Yi. Um, he has done basically no campaigning. He has a one-page letter and a donate button. He's got half a million, uh, he's got a quarter of a million dollars you know, from somewhere. Um, and uh, and then Padilla has done a lot of campaigning. He's got about three hundred thousand. So you know, I'm, I'm looking to what is historically done, and I'm going to try to emulate that. And uh, I have a good fundraiser that uh, close to, and uh, hopefully that person can show me the ropes. <laughs> And, uh, and that's what I'm doing, and, and I've got to really step it up. I, I, you know, I filed a tent a while ago uh, in February, and I thought by doing that I could do, you know, I could get some incremental build up financially. But you know, we're in a horrific economy. But they're not admitting it. But you know, we've got something probably like 40, 50 percent underemployment. Um, you know, it, it's a horrific economy. So, so I think the small asks are the way to go because otherwise, I frankly, just feel guilty using money for political purposes in this economy. Uh, you know, big amounts of money. Thank you. So, should we get elected? Um, uh, name and county. Oh, Mark Bruce, Secretary of County. And should you get elected? Uh, I'm thinking you could use the data. You know, since every corporation has to file with the Secretary of State.